Hey guys, my name is Sid and welcome to another episode of Living in Dubai. So the government decided to implement VAT in Dubai from the 1st of Jan. There's been a little bit of confusion about VAT, so I thought I'd get David over here, who's a VAT expert, to come in and answer some of my questions that I had. And then I polled some of you guys as well about the questions you had about VAT. So we've got a list over here. Uh, so basically, we're going to be covering three major topics, which is VAT in general and then VAT for businesses, for tourists, and, and finally the questions that we asked you guys uh, on YouTube and Facebook. David, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is David. I am a partner in Argent Golf Consulting. Uh, we are a practice of experienced uh, Western expats who have uh, lived and grown up and qualified in VAT environments back in the Western world, uh, be it in Western Europe or down in South Africa. All right, cool. So what exactly is VAT? VAT is a tax applied on the supply chain. A lot of us who've been to America and places like that will be used to sales tax. So sales tax is applied at the point of consumption. You buy something to eat it or drink it or use it, you get charged tax. Mm -hmm. VAT is applied across every element within getting that good to the final consumer. The man who produces it, charges it, the man who distributes it, pays that VAT, Mm -hmm. claims it back and charges it to the next person down along to the food chain until you pop into that shop and buy it and you ultimately pay that VAT and you cannot reclaim it. <laughs> All right, so so it works across the full value chain, that's why Correct. value across added the full value chain, yes. All right, cool. So I know the government introduced excise tax. So for those of you who don't know, excise tax is um, something that the government introduced back in August and that is a special tax that they put on harmful items like sugar drinks, tobacco, uh, energy drinks. Uh, so those became almost double the price a couple of months ago, but that has nothing to do with VAT, correct? Nothing at all got to do with VAT. As you say, it's a sin tax yeah. uh, for things where we're trying to encourage you as a government to do things which are good for you, i.e. stop drinking sugary drinks, stop drinking ener er, energy drinks, and stop smoking. Uh, mm -hmm. VAT as a tax sits on top of all other taxes. Okay. So if you can imagine the municipality charges, any other municipality or government related charge, mm -hmm. excise duties, etc. You add the whole lot up and then you charge tax on that pile. Okay. So you already explained the difference between VAT and sales tax, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but what is the main difference to the consumer? Do the consumer is the same? The consumer is the same. Uh, the reason there is that difference is if there's a fraud in a mm. sales tax environment, the government loses everything. The retailer picks up all the tax that's charged and it runs away to wherever it goes to. Okay. In a VAT environment, because it's done over the supply chain, that loss is uh, mitigated because it's only lost at one, purport, one part of the supply chain. And you can blame the French for that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what categories in Dubai are exempt from tax? Very from VAT, so. Yeah, very, very few. Local transportation, um, and that includes internal flights. So, for whatever reason you're flying from A to B, VAT doesn't apply. Uh, your taxis, etc. Uh, residents, so your private residence, your landlord cannot charge you VAT, uh, it's exempt. Additionally, exempt is any interest charges, it's neither a good nor a service. And finally, life insurance. There you go. That's it. That's it? Yep. What about car rentals? Because that's my business. Car <laughs> rentals, I'm afraid, is standard rate. It's so a service. It, so it doesn't come under transportation, does it? No. Damn it. So will VAT ever be deducted from your salary or anything like that? No. Salary, never, salary and VAT don't come into play. The reason for that is VAT is a charge on um, a service and mm. a salary is not a service. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it doesn't apply. Okay, but does my employer pay a VAT when they pay me? No, nothing else to do with it. Uh, typically there you have employment taxes. So if you go back again to the Western world, national insurances, payroll, uh, tax, income tax, etc. But they don't exist here at this time. Yeah, so no income tax or employment tax in Dubai, just no. to be clear. Yeah. yeah. So do you think VAT is going to impact the cost of living in Dubai? Yeah, it will do. Um, but let's split out how people's income or in people's income is used. Mm -hmm. Typically, between twenty to thirty percent of your income is spent on your residence, right. and that is exempt from VAT. 
although you've got to remember what that means in practical terms to your landlord. It means your landlord cannot charge you VAT and on it, his costs, which include security, cleaning and so on, where he gets charged VAT, he cannot reclaim it. Okay. So you can expect rents to nudge up a little okay. as uh, landlords seek to recapture those costs that it's not able to claim. Um, the other big uh, ticket item which uh, people face in this country is uh, education. Education is mm. zero rated. So again, that's not going to impinge on you. So if you're spending 50 odd percent of your total income between your rent and your education of your kids. Mm -hmm. uh, that means only half of your income is going to be impacted by VAT. Mm -hmm. And again, allow for international travel, flying home, that's zero rated as well. Okay. The expected effect is about two, two and a half percent on inflation, which in Dubai, given the cost of living here more generally, mm -hmm. I don't think most people are going to notice. And if you think about it in the last couple of, last year odd, yeah. prices have been softening. Rents are coming off. Yeah. Uh, there are certain things which are certainly becoming cheaper out there. You'll see the decline probably slow a bit to adjust for VAT, sure. but eh, you're not going to notice much. 5% is not going to change any of these lives as a consumer. Yeah, so honestly, um, you know, VAT's been in place for the last, what is it, four weeks now? Four whole weeks. Yeah, so still here? Um, honestly, not a huge difference to me, um, just my personal opinion. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I guess it's the small things do add up, but you don't notice it because it's kind of at the point when you're buying something. So mm -hmm. it's small, small additional expenses as opposed to a big chunk coming out. At one it's time. been handled very differently uh, mm -hmm. across the board. If you look at uh, certain retailers put their prices up last summer. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're able to say at the start of the year they're not going to put prices up. Yeah, they're back free. The VAT. Yeah, <laughs> it's already been done. Then there are those who have put up their charges quite substantially, mm -hmm. um, and those those will be noticed by consumers. And remember, you are a consumer. Yeah. You don't have to go to that shop. You can go to another shop. Yeah. Uh, and VAT. One of the great things it does uh, in a competitive marketplace is. It makes everybody focus. It makes you, the viewer, focus on what you are spending money on. And mm -hmm. you're now more aware of what it is you are spending. So therefore, uh, it is time maybe to look at again, look again at where you're spending your money and mm -hmm. to choose again. And that will change the marketplace. Businesses will not be here in a year's time because of VAT, because they handled it badly. True. And that will be because of what your decision. <laughs> Make them wisely. I guess it increases the transparency as well for businesses as well in terms of they have to report to the government, do more auditing, stuff like that? Yes and no. In theory it should, but uh, I would say up until around November, mm -hmm. a lot of um, businesses had a, more of a belief in Santa than they did in tax. They just didn't think it was going to happen. Uh, you, you can argue there are businesses today that have decided Santa is still more real than VAT. Uh, and I come across them. Uh, VAT's here. VAT was a necessity for the government and mm -hmm. it's a reflection of the UAE as a country and the GCC more widely because mm -hmm. it is a GCC framework. It, the country mm -hmm. is growing up and somebody's got to pay the bills. We have great infrastructure. You, yeah. you travel back to the Western world and by God, this is a completely different place. Mm -hmm. uh, there are problems, but there's problems everywhere. Uh, but certainly from an infrastructure point of view in terms of the investment that's going into it and mm -hmm. the ongoing investment, somebody's got to pay the bill. Yeah. And that uh, is part, that's part and parcel of taxes. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the great two certainties in life, the other one being death. Yeah, I honestly well, wondered, like, Dubai has world-class infrastructure, the road systems over here, the public transportation, everything is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered how they are able to finance it. I guess uh, they were bearing the brunt of the cost all this time. Yeah, they and, were. And now they're looking at ways to... Yeah, to, they're, looking, to they're looking for us to share it. Yeah. I mean, in the early days, they uh, the oil wealth, the natural wealth of the country, they invested that into the country to encourage us to come here. We did. It's been great, thank you very much. <laughs> and now we're being asked to pay our share, and, and yeah. so we should. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a good way to implement it as well, like a small 5% across the value chain. It doesn't impact you drastically. It's 5% now. Uh, the average international OEC, or average international rate of VAT is 19.6%. So and we good. will, yeah. <laughs> and we will see over time it'll be it'll go to the same here now one of the things which will act as a constraint on that is because the gcc signed a gcc vat law mm -hmm. all six countries of the gcc all six of them must agree to any change in that rate if they do not agree as a group it does not change interesting i didn't know that yeah 
Now we are on to the business section of what's required when it comes to VAT. Uh, what do businesses need to do to prepare for VAT? Oh well. Okay, you're a little late, but uh, okay, we're here today in uh, the end of January. Uh, you have to register. Okay. okay, you have to register. If you are not registered, get registered. There is the potential of a 20,000 dirham fine. You should have been registered on the 4th of December last year. That was the last date you should have applied. Okay. Once you have that done, the next thing you need to be get working on is your compliance. Mm -hmm. Think about VAT as a series of rules. Imagine there's 100 rules. And your VAT compliance means that how you operate from, uh, from one end of your business to the other from your marketing effort to uh, your fulfillment, to your customer, to your aftercare service, all elements along your supply chain must comply with the rules of VAT. VAT is not accounting. Accounting is, is an aspect of VAT. So don't be completely depending on your accountant. Okay, so who needs to register for that? Okay, okay I think that's a business question. So that's that's fine. fine. Uh, who needs to register any business? And there'll be a lot of people watching this who'll be who'll be in the SME sector. Mm -hmm. If you are turning over, if you are invoicing more than three hundred and seventy-five thousand dirham mm -hmm. in the next year, you need to register for VAT. You have okay. to. If you're invoicing over one hundred eighty-seven thousand five hundred, you have the option whether or not to register for VAT. And I would keep two things in consideration. One, how does the market perceive you, your customers perceive you, if you are not registered for VAT? Will they perceive you as some minor mm -hmm. operator that they don't want to do business with? Mm -hmm. In which case you may find yourself forced to register for VAT just for credibility's, per for credibility's sake. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to, if you're a small business and you're just doing business, uh, you're just selling to consumers like the two of us here mm -hmm. uh, in our own right, you don't have to. If you're below 375, and to be quite honest with you, I probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So, um, what if you're below 185 and you still want to, or one, what is the number you said? 187,500. If you're below that, you may not register. You cannot? No. And if in fact you are registered already and your turnover collapses or drops down to 187,500, which is the expected turnover over the following 12 months, mm -hmm. you must deregister for VAT. Oh, and really? there is a fine if you do not. Oh wow! There okay. are fines, so penalties. So essentially, if your projected revenue for the year is going to be even projected is going to be below one eighty five, you should not register. One eighty seven five hundred. One eighty seven five hundred. Sorry. How is uh, real estate treated when it comes to VAT? Very mixed. Uh, so residential, uh, we've already spoken about. Your landlord mm -hmm. cannot charge a VAT. It is exempt. Okay. Uh, commercial is standard rated. Okay. So if you, if you rented an office, you will get charged 5%. Now let's have a look at what happens in transition. So you've had an office, you rented it at the start of October mm -hmm. and you got a one year lease to the end of September 2018. Mm -hmm. You will not have been charged VAT on the 2017 portion. Okay. However, on midnight on the 1st of uh, January 2018, VAT became payable on the 2018 portion of your lease contract. Okay. Uh, you've seen it more recently in the press with Fitness First, uh, who contacted its full membership and told them that they had to pay uh, VAT on the 2018 portion mm -hmm. of their membership what they had paid in 2017. So they got membership uh, straddling two years. That was incorrect. I mean, effectively illegal. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, in a business, consumer transaction, i.e. a registered entity which is registered for VAT mm -hmm. to an individual or an unregistered entity, i.e. an entity which is you and I who are not registered in our own right for VAT. Mm -hmm. If VAT is not mentioned in the contract, not mm -hmm. mentioned in the price, mm -hmm. then it is deemed to be included within the price. What uh, um, okay. Fitness First attempted to do, and we've seen <laughs> this in the national, and in fact the government, the Federal Tax Authority responded to it, was to charge VAT on that portion. No. Okay. Uh, just to follow on from that, in a commercial contract where both entities are registered for VAT, mm. the uh, invoicing entity can charge VAT to the, to the uh, leasee okay. because both are registered and you have what's called grandfathering. Mm. So in effect, the contract between the two inherits tax. Okay. And that is because one party can charge and one party can claim. So they're not worse off. 
Okay, so there's no big deal about it. And there are companies who are making a bit of a stink about it. I'm not happy. Why am I being charged fat on an invoice from last year? Well, that's just how it is. What about reporting your financial activity? How okay, so uh, very large entities. Again, we go back to our car fours. We've already plugged them once. Plug them again. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for this. Um, they would have to report monthly. And very large entities turning over large sums of money do in both the UAE and any international environment, it's very common. Mm -hmm. And part of that is to mitigate the risk just in case uh, there's a fraud, not that I'm suggesting there would be, mm -hmm. but that's just normal practice. Other entities will typically uh, be reporting in three monthly uh, cycles. Um, reporting is in the UAE, and uh, the sales are reported by Emirate. Okay. Then your GCC sales, then your international sales. Then your purchases, UAE, GCC, VAT Live, and international. Although we haven't seen what the final input form is going to look like. That's the sales and purchases in totals. Then you get into the actual VAT. Output VAT is the VAT you charge on your customers. Input VAT is the VAT you get charged by your suppliers. Again, you'll have to break them out. Okay. You By registering for VAT, they've already got your bank details. Our expectation is once you've plugged all these numbers in, you look at the total output VAT reported, i.e. what you charged, you take away the VAT that you've been charged, which you want to reclaim, mm -hmm. and the net position, you either pay or reclaim. If you're paying, they've got your bank details, and our expectation is you will press the button, and the machine will go, <laughs> suck your money out of your bank account, and the government will be happy and satisfied for three months. Okay. If you're owed money, uh, you're likely to get an audit. Again, this is quite common. You've asked the government for money, they want to know why. Now, okay. you will be submitting top line numbers. So your total sales, okay. uh, broken down as I said earlier, purchases and your output and your input VAT. And it will be up to you to keep the backup behind what constitutes those numbers. Okay. And you want to keep them and never let anything happen to them. And never okay. let them change once you've reported them they are historical records okay don't let them change if they have to change because you made a mistake contact the federal tax authority go i'm terribly sorry i made a mistake okay. tell them before they find out it's cheaper okay how long do you have to hold on to historical records five, five years five years in the case of property 15. oh wow okay the most interesting question is what happens if you fail to pay a bat there is a fine for not paying your VAT on time. And if you can't pay your VAT at all, uh, let's put it like this. It's coming up to your VAT return point uh, and you realize that you haven't got the cash to pay the VAT man. You're in trouble to begin with. Mm -hmm. Ring them, okay. okay? You're already in trouble. <laughs> Just get on the phone, call them, mm -hmm. tell them this is where things are and have a conversation and be an adult about it. What you don't want to do is to go past the date hoping to goodness that somehow money will fly in the door and you'll be able to afford to pay it. Just okay. talk to them. Man up. That's how, the, that's how the real world works. So, but what happens if you don't pay? Is it like jail time? Is it a fine? There is a fine. Mm -hmm. uh, anything beyond that? I would hope, and I, I can't speak authoritatively on this one, mm -hmm. I would hope that if you went to them uh, and told them, look, there's a cash flow issue, uh, and you were able to demonstrate that you had a plan to deal with it, mm -hmm. I would hope that they would deal with you. At the end of the day, like anybody who's owed money, if they'd rather get their money back than put you in a situation where they're never going to get their money back. Right. That's what I would hope. But so we're gonna do the Q&A section for uh, your questions that we asked on YouTube. So, um, all right, so what is the difference between VAT and GST? They're it's just really a name. Uh, so, for example, in Australia it's GST, in India it's GST, okay. but it's basically VAT by another name. Okay, so it works the same way. Uh, well, there's nuances. Uh, look at Saudi Arabia, and they're within the GCC VAT framework. For them, local transportation is standard rated. Here, it's exempt. Okay. So there are nuances between different markets. Okay. Uh... This is the second time reading them. It's where <laughs> I still have to them find them. There are like so many. If you're looking to question. cast somebody in your next movie, Thor 4. Okay, what is the reason for that in Gulf countries? That's the question. Yeah, uh, basically, look, we've had everything free for a long time. We're not paying tax. It's been great. Thank you very much, UAE and GCC <laughs> more widely. Uh, at some point, we got to contribute to the development of the country. Right. This is part of the country growing up, and in fact, the region growing up. It's a good thing. We're mm -hmm. going to get corporation tax down the line, and at some point, we'll end up with income tax as well. And that is part of 
it's maturing, uh, the maturing environment uh, mm -hmm. that we live in, and we shouldn't worry about it. It's 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 a normal. It's healthy. Are e-commerce businesses charged by? In yeah, Dubai? every everything is uh, anything which is not a physical good. Mm -hmm. Five percent on your cushions. Um, anything that isn't a good, by definition, is a service, and VAT will apply. So, but what if your customer doesn't live in Dubai? It's still your UAE-based business. You still have to pay them. You okay. still have to charge VAT. So it's a UAE business that's an online business selling to a customer where? In another country. Okay. So if they're selling, say, to Saudi, which is a VAT live country, mm -hmm. and they're selling to an individual who is not a registered entity, they will charge UAE VAT. Okay. Up to $100,000. After that, they will need to register in Saudi for Saudi VAT, charge Saudi VAT, and report um, to the Saudi authorities. By the way, that's all in Arabic. Good luck with it. Uh, <laughs> if you're selling internationally, say you're sending it to Egypt, you charge 0% VAT. Exports are always 0% VAT, and that okay. is the same internationally. The Chinese played were trying to do it differently. It was a mess. They gave up. Okay. So if I'm shipping goods to a different country, that transaction won't have a VAT. It, it will have VAT. It will have VAT at zero percent. And this is something people have difficulty with. Mm -hmm. um, there is such a thing as zero percent VAT. So you're charging VAT, but you're charging it at zero percent. So when you go to book, book your flights home for Christmas to wherever you're going to, hoping mm -hmm. somewhere sunny, um, the airline will charge you VAT, but they will charge you VAT at zero percent. Okay. Okay. So it's you still have that byline. You also have that byline, absolutely. Okay. And when you're raising your invoices as an SME out there, you've got to break out that byline. You must show the VAT percentage, you must show the VAT value, you must show the net amount, the gross amount, mm -hmm. and the same in totals. And if you're doing it in a foreign currency, yeah. you must show it in foreign currency, in AED, mm -hmm. and at the exchange rate used. You must do this, oh, wow. it is the rules. Okay. To have a valid VAT invoice, if it is not a valid VAT invoice, there is a penalty. Do not incur penalties. Okay, so there's another question. A hundred and twenty-seven percent rise in cost of petrol post VAT in the buys is true? No, it's not true. No, <laughs> it's not. No, true. I know it's going up. Uh, oh God, this went up about seven or eight percent in uh, February. Yeah, but I don't think it's VAT related. No, it's not VAT related yeah. at all. If so, you look at the oil price and we kind of track where it's going, I mean the reality is we pay very little for petrol here uh, yeah. relative to the rest of the world. It's it true. is the highest. Petrol price, I believe, in the GCC, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty cheap. Guys enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I haven't noticed a big change in my fuel bill. Yeah, take the boulders out of the back of your car and just make it a bit lighter. Okay, uh, basic tax rate for things came under VAT there, and positive and negative impact of VAT on a whole in Arab society. Ooh, that's a deep <laughs> question written badly. Sorry, questioner. We have no idea what you're rambling on about. Yeah, I don't get the question. Have another go. All right. Um, what will be the ex approximate expense of bed, food, transportation? Okay, the net effect on your cost of living is about 2.5%. There were loads of questions, but some of them were very similar. And they were so comprehensive in our video, they were covered. Good guy. Yeah. All right. Um, He's hired again. Local deliveries made to cargoes for export. Local courier, local courier charges are vatable. Uh, international transportation of goods is zero rated. Okay. Where there is zero rate on international cargo, where there is an internal leg, is imagine a flight that takes off from Ras Al Khaimah mm -hmm. with manifest of goods. Mm -hmm. and it flies to DWC, mm -hmm. Dubai World Cargo. It lands and then takes off and flies those goods to, say, London. Mm -hmm. uh, the first flight, which is an in-country flight, inherits the later element of the flight and the whole flight would be zero rated in that case. Okay. If that doesn't answer your question. It's a okay. complicated area, I'm sorry. So, like, say I'm purchasing goods locally to be exported. All right, so there's a couple of transactions. Yeah. The first transaction is you buying the goods locally. That's VAT. That's got a VAT, and then you're yeah. going to export them. Okay, that's and that will be zero percent. Okay, fine. All right, but I can't join those two and say that I'm purchasing this for the purpose of no. export. No, what do you got? What do you got to look at in a given transaction? Is there's a buyer and there's a seller. All right. Okay. What you're trying to say is there's a buyer, a seller, and, and the buyer is also a seller. 
You're trying to you're no, trying because, to jam in another transaction yeah, but for the purposes because, uh, of avoiding tax. Dubai is a huge re-export market. Yeah. So a lot of people will buy goods like say from Egypt, re-export it to Africa. Yeah, that's fine. Or and that whole transaction but, is non-taxable. No, it's not that. They're all discrete transactions. Okay, Mr. Cushion here lives in Egypt and he yeah. sells to me in Dubai. Yeah, and I and I re-export that to Africa without it ever entering into the oh, Dubai okay. economy. All right, so what happens there is the Egyptian seller, Mr. Cushion, sends it into a designated zone. Now, that was released about a week and a half ago really? uh, by the government. It goes into bond, which means it is secured and sealed, Okay. Uh, which means it never lands. Right. Um, so it is out of scope for VAT, and it then gets sold on to somebody in a third country. Okay. In that case, VAT doesn't exist for those Goods. Okay, not so even zero percent. No, that doesn't exist. Cool. I think that's all the questions. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have any more questions. You can leave it down in the comments in this YouTube video. David, would you be kind enough to yeah, let sure. leave your email address and <laughs> I'll get back to you. All right, cool. So, um, David, if you want to talk about your business or your company, your practice. Yeah, just very quickly, uh, I'm a partner in Arjun Gulf Consulting. Yeah. Um, you can contact me on david.daily, D-A-L-Y, at arjunvat.com. Um, we do everything from back compliance down to accounting services um, and other uh, things uh, in terms of um, uh, fractional uh, finance executive support. Uh, but get in touch. Uh, be interested to hear your queries, interested to hear your feedback on what living with VAT has been to date. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you, David. Thanks Pleasure. for being in the Good vlog. So if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to watch more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. There's you go. I did the bloopers. He lost the bloopers. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, what sort of cameraman this... is he? You're fired. <laughs> if you want to apply for the job of cameraman, this guy is toast. He's getting his P45 <laughs> at the end. He is <laughs> out of here. Uh, gonna hit him with this pillow. Useless, <laughs> useless, useless. <laughs> so guys, we were like talking for like, oh shit. So we were like talking for like 10 minutes and the camera wasn't recording. That's why.